And I'm going to show you this. I, I mean, the predictions for 2022 across the board are wacky. They're all over the place. So let's take a look at this. Come with me. Here, all right. This is, and Google it, guys. Google everything that I'm showing you. You can check it out. You can fact check all of this. But this is the estimates for appreciation in 2022. You've got Goldman Sachs at the top saying that the real estate market is gonna grow by 12.6% appreciation. Not only that, do you know what last year was? Anybody? Last year, nationwide, 19.1% appreciation in the real estate market. In some areas like Phoenix, we're at 35% right but across the nation 19 percent appreciation goldman sachs says it's going to be 12.6 zillow says it's going to be 11. everybody's kind of you know crapping on zillow right now because of you know them rolling back their whole we will buy your your house for this estimate but they have a lot of data they're at 11 percent fannie mae 7.9 freddie seven percent red redfin three percent the only guys that are doom and gloom are the National Mortgage Association because they are really scared that the interest rates are going to go up. And the interest rates did go up. The interest rates went from 3.1 to 3.64. So what does that mean? That means that it adds an extra $100 worth of payment on average to people's mortgages. Right? And then they go, well, if they don't have as much buying power, then it's going to affect the values of properties and the properties are going to go down. Well, yes, in a, in, a, in a vacuum, but we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a, a, a society of free market economics, which means supply and demand. And the demand is at a, uh, the, the demand is so high and the inventory is at a 40 year low. Okay, this is absolutely incredible. So this is what it's, listen, by the way, I'm giving you all these stats just so that in your mind, you that there's no kind of concern that this is gonna crash like 2008 or you know that we're set up the same way as a really big financial crash there. It's not, I get it. They pumped a bunch of money into the economy. I get it, inflation, we'll talk about that. I get it, I get all those things. But really, really, really smart people see a positive appreciation for this year, okay? That's something that's important to know. That's important to know for us because for the next year, sellers are going to say to you, I know it's a hot market. I know that there's not a lot of properties on the market. I wanna get the most that I can and take advantage of this market, right? They still have to be realistic on the price. If these properties are destroyed, you're buying them at what, I mean, you're locking these properties up at the, at the value that you think that property is worth, right? I mean, listen, no matter what, whether it be toothpicks, a Ferrari, a house, the buyer determines the value of that. Every time, a ready, willing, and able buyer. You could make something and if nobody buys it, it has no value until somebody gives you value for it. And that's the buyer, all right? So here we are, there's the appreciation. Now let, let's look at this. This is what's really interesting because we're hearing a lot about two things, inflation and interest rates. Well, what happens? What, what, is, what is inflation? Inflation means that there's a lot of money out there. They've printed a ton of money. You can see, I know, listen, I eat lunch at Lifetime Fitness three times a week. All right, the salad that I got, it's like this protein salad thing, was $11.99. They switched it to $14.99. That's inflation, because there's more money and we have hyperinflation because of the supply chain issues that we have right now, right? Because of COVID, because of whatever's going on in the ports. I mean, there's a ton of other things going on, but there's a supply chain issue. So there's a lack of supply and there's a ton of money. So people are increasing the prices for everything and there's a short shortage of labor. So not only do you have to pay people more to work for you, which means more money goes back into the market because when people get money, they spend it. It's right here. When you get money, this is what happens to it, okay? If you're an employee, you get taxed right off the bat. 
If you're an owner, I mean, if you're a, a, a owner of a LLC or a corporation, you can play around with this and you can you pay your tax after your expenses. But money comes in, you get taxed, right? And then you have the opportunity to spend it. You have the opportunity to give it back. You're somebody else's ROI through debt and interest. And then you have the opportunity to invest. So why does the stock market get all shaky when they say that they're gonna raise the interest rates? Well, because more of the money goes to paying debt now. And if there's more money going to debt, then there's less money going to investing. And if there's less money going to investing, then the stock market goes down. You see big time investors pulling their money out whenever they hear that interest rates are going to go up because they want to time the market. They're pulling their money out. They're waiting for it to dip down as low as possible because they know it's gonna rebound. And then when it's down low, they buy it. They buy that dip, they buy it when it's low, and then it goes back up, and that's how wealth is created. Boom, boom, they're timing the market, right? That's what's happening. That's why you're hearing all these things. Oh, the, the market's down. Oh, uh, Warren Buffett's pulling out of this, and Elon Musk is pulling out of that, and crypto's going crazy, and it's going down. Yes, because there's less money to invest, because there's more money going into paying interest. We are a country built on IOUs. We're a country built on this for sure well brent what happens if well who owns this debt where does this debt go how, how does it ever get paid off they are betting on your future you anybody that's paying interest is somebody's roi so when that interest rate goes up less money is there for investing and less money is there for spending and the and, and what we know and google it Google it right now, that taxes, for the average person, tax and debt is what you're paying January through October. That's the average American pays their taxes and pays interest on their cars, on their student loans, on their credit cards, on their mortgage, all the way from January to October. So then you got November and December to invest and to spend and go on vacation and do some fun stuff. But most people just put that on debt, right? Most people just put it on a credit card. But not here, not here. We know that we're gonna do everything to get big checks, pay our taxes, <clears throat> keep it humble, keep it real, keep the money, invest that money into assets, right? A good man, children's children, right? Inheritance to the children's children. That's who we become, we have to be disciplined. We have to be disciplined right now. We do the same thing, the same thing that we did last year and all the preceding years before that. We go out there, we have quality conversations with distressed property owners. We make a big income, ugly houses, big checks. That's what we do. And we bring that income in and we buy assets. And that is the inheritance. That's the person that we become. We become an incredibly disciplined, an incredibly savvy, an incredibly focused professional. That's how you win the game. So it doesn't matter. You can't predict what's going to happen in the future. You can't control what's gonna happen in a free market society. You can only control what you're going to do. You can only control the way that you're going to go about this business. Are you going to be proactive or are you going to be reactive? Are you going to have an open mindset or are you going to have a fixed mindset? That's what we're talking about. We're going to have, are you going to surround yourself with people that just want to kind of live that, that average life and just do the nine to five and check out and, and live their life afterwards? Or are you going to be one of those hardcore entrepreneurs that's always going to be thinking about protecting your family, protecting that inheritance, becoming somebody that is uh, just a superstar? becoming somebody that is financially so incredibly solid that the rest of your family has a blueprint to follow if they want to, if, if that's their choice. But give them the choice, all right? There you go. One last thing that I want to touch about is here. I, I just thought this was interesting and I just like showing you guys interesting things. National home values. In 2000, 22 years ago, the national home value was $165,000. Now it's 374,900. Google it. It's worth a Google. There you go. 2022. This, but that's 22 years. That's crazy. In the stock market, you can make way more than that. Listen, you're making it off of this. 
Typically when you're buying a piece of real estate, you're putting 20% down. You're turning this into this in 22 years passively, let alone the tax benefits that you get for depreciation, let alone the cash flow that you get from these properties and the debt pay down. Not only are you getting the appreciation, this, what you owe on this is less and less and less every day. Imagine if you bought five of these properties, you would be a millionaire passively. Five properties, you need $150,000 22 years ago. But those prices aren't the same now. Now you need much more. You need, you need like 90,000 to put on each property, yes. And in 22 years, it's gonna just be more and more and more and more. You gotta bet on American land. You gotta bet on American property. It's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. Historically, it keeps going up. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, I think that what the Fed is doing with interest rates is smart. I think that it pulls money off the table, more money goes into it, and it keeps the, the economy chugging along because inflation will go bananas when they put $12 trillion into, I think it's 12, might be more, Google it, somebody correct me, but it, $12 trillion into the market with all the stimulus and all the help with businesses, and that's why interest rates are going up. But remember this, in the late 70s, interest rates were at 18%. Yeah, we're at 3.6 and we're like, oh, the sky's falling. Oh, this is it. I knew it. We've been having too good of a, it's been a bull market for too, too long. Come on, just focus, make the money, go out there, have quality conversations, make that income, invest in assets. You win, that's it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about timing the market. Don't worry about any of that. You worry about the efforts that you can put into your business. All right? If you like that video, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos every single day. And if you want your questions answered, like you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that you join us for the live show every single Wednesday. I will see you there.